Okay, hello. I'm going to jump straight to the point here and just say that this video is something that was originally going to be an article, uh, but instead what we're going to be doing is doing a video. We're going to step through a number of fits here. So we've got these potato fits, these fits that came out of uh, just an Astra a while ago. They're all a little bit shit in one way or another, and I'm going to try and try and demonstrate really how I tend to improve fits. See, I quite often, probably every day at, at the very least, I often have people come to me and say, hey, can you tell me how to improve this? Or is this a good fit? And 90% of the time the answer is, well, no, you've done this wrong or this is suboptimal and, you know, we all want to do well in EVE. So why not fly the best fits you can? It doesn't take a huge amount and I'm not trying to to bling anything. And you'll see here, I mean, if I start with this Caracal Navy issue, it's uh, it's quite a simple process, really. Uh, so just going over to the copy. You can see the goal of this Caracal Navy, it seems to be something that was uh, kind of a buffer brawler. I mean, the, the large ansel, it's it's just a, um, a buffer, really. It's, it's 30.6 seconds with 10.4k EHP. If we heat the invul, we're looking at 11.3k EHP. Uh, so together we've got 34.1k EHP. Uh, assuming that you can heat your invul that long, which you should, you should. Uh, DPS, the respectable 588 cold, so it's it's not too bad. Not a terrible fit, but definitely not a good one. I mean, I could, I could certainly see something like this losing out against even a 10 MN stabber or something. Just the wrong situation and it, it's not going to do well. Uh, one of the main mistakes here though, anyway, we've got the T2 micro warp drive. Uh, this is something I try to mention to people quite often. It's not a great module. You're trading you're trading away some of your capacitor and your signature radius in exchange for, I think it's 5%, 5% extra thrust. It's not great. It's worse on your fitting and you can see this fits already pushed pretty much to the limits. So first thing I would typically do, drop that back to restrained, which will give us a smaller signature and a about 10 seconds or 20 second better cap life when running. So that's already better. You should have less hit on your on your capacitor overall. Uh, the large ansel is something that we straight up need to remove. I mean, you've got that 34.1k there, and that drops us right down to 22.8k. Um, and I'm just going to give it a go. I'm going to try the large shield extender for starters, see what that does, and that, that straight away gets us back to 32.8k. Uh, so you can see from the calculator, it's a loss in quite literally just about 2k. EHP, and that's going to give us more more fitting room. Right now we haven't really done anything with that, but well, we can see what we can do. For starters, if we take off this fitting rig and we take off this power diag, that does give us an extra rig to play with. Uh, so let's see, we can go with the extra ballistic control, which is already pretty good. It's, it's a pretty good way of doing things. We'll increase these to T2, because as you can see, the T2 versions of resist shield modules are about 4 million-esque. For the money, that's really pretty good. You should try and T2 these if you have the rigging calibration to do so. Uh, on top of that, let's go module market group and grab the extender. And that that is really simple. I mean, you've got straight away there. 35.7k EHP. So again, not bad. So we've improved the EHP. Even when you've not got it heated, we've improved the EHP. We have, I suppose, technically improved the passive regen. Capacitor has dropped a little bit because we took that uh, power diag off, but it's not really too much for concern. And yeah, that's already looking better. If we were to go the other way, however, if we just make another copy, we can try and go for the XL ASB. Because you see, you often see people saying, 
you know we want an ASB on here because that's that's good, right? That's that's just what people like doing. But the point is that the large Excel, the large ancillary, doesn't really do much for you. I mean, you get in on the previous fit. Uh, I think it's 11k. Yeah, 9, 10, 11k, 10k EHP, which is not brilliant. So let's instead try this. If we we try and do it the other way around, if we go for uh, maybe cap boost to 400. We can already get 26k. We are massively over on power grid, but let's try and fix that. We'll take off the core defense field extender because it's not really doing much. And go for a reactor control unit. Still miles over. Uh, this probably is going to want to drop to compact because we are, yeah, we know we're going to have problems there. And rather than another ansel, we're going to go, we'll, we'll try another reactor. Just still over. If we go for dark blood versions maybe. No, it's still pretty far over, so we are gonna dip into the, the rigs and we're gonna have to go for that ansel. Try and keep the T1 if possible, look at the cost down. So we go for a T1 ansel, that does help us. That sources out that gets us um five percent under a hundred, which is actually quite nice, so we should be able to drop them back to T two. In fact that's already pretty good so what we'll do is let's clean up the CPU let's take that to compact take that to compact so just a mid step easily changed you are going to lose a bit of range you're going to lose a bit of webbing power it's it's not the best but it's an easy swap and we're still 79 over which is it's massive Let's have a look. Um, we can try taking off the damage control, which really does put us all in on the on the shield tank now. Damage control obviously helps with the shield, but it's it's not great. If we try a nano, uh, we're still over on CPU. Let's try this. We are miles over. It's no. Let's try a power diag. No, that doesn't quite make it either. Maybe we can try the T2 current router. I mean, that that fixes that issue, and technically this is a better module to go for because the power diagnostic is going to give you less power grid, but it will give you a bonus to shield, shield regen, and uh, capacitor as well, so it's nicer to have that. Whether that costs, you know, that cost of 23 mil in the T2 Ansel is worth it is up to you. Uh, going back to the mids, we've got... Yeah, we've got a definite CPU problem. I feel like at this point, I mean, you, we probably need to bring that overclock back. It's going to be quite difficult on the calibration right now, but yeah, that, that almost does it. Let's try compacting the ballistic control. And yeah, that gets us 99%, 99%. In fact, 99.92 in that case, you're pretty much dead on. So this is the alternate way of doing it. This is how you'd set up a an XL ASB. Might as well use a bit of hard shell, maybe a T2 dose for about a million esque. Bump that up to 24.5k. So you can see from that, we're looking at 40.9k EHP, which is about 6k, 6 or 7k more than our buffer fit, so overall not really impressed with that, and it's it's kind of a quite a classic uh, demonstration of, of this thing where people, you see, they do this, they fit just tons and tons of fitting modules just to try and accommodate that. And really, if you take a step back and go for something a lot more simple like this, you can really almost achieve the results you want. You've got 35.7k and you haven't had to go down the route of, of dropping all of your DPS and uh, overall you're a lot better. I should also note that this uh, this newer fit here does actually have more DPS over the original back up to 650 now. So this fit actually does 748 which is not too bad for a Caracal Navy issue. 
right, moving on to the next fit. Let's go with the Stratius here. I don't know what to expect, to be honest. Uh, so we've got a Newting Stratius, like everyone, everyone loves. Let's turn the Ogres on. So we've got the small Nos, small Newt, and a medium Newt. T2 probe launcher isn't really ideal, but we'll keep it for now. Let's make the copy. And let's get the original open as well. Alright, so let's see how stable this is. And we're looking at 2 minutes 21. Assuming that the target's got a capacitor, which ideally they shouldn't do. Uh, you probably won't have your micro warp on, so that's, that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, I would personally move this up here. Obviously, obviously you can do that in game, but nice to do it here as well. Just try and maximise your uh, your reps that you can get. Uh, this micro warp in this fit, I'm going to change that to a restrain. That's an easy, as you can see, an easy boost back to a capacitor. Mostly since you know we're looking at a battery tank. We've got a battery and a boost tank. I mean that it's a little bit uncommon, but it works. What I would like to do though is I'd like to change this to a TT. See how that goes. Um, tiny bit over. Because you see the T2, it gets 15 gigajoules per second, whereas if we go back to a scoped or similar, we're going to get 13.8. So it's, it's nice to upgrade if you can, it really is. And yeah, I'd say if we can do that. Um, only thing we can do from there really is maybe play with the repers. I know you can't see this window right now, but. Uh, one of the other options, just having a look at the list, is from the centre. Um, could drop to a true centre, which would save some isk as well. So if we try that, it's going to be less reps. Yeah, so we're looking at 525 compared to 550, which works. It's It's a thing. Alternatively, you could take this down back to compact, which again gives us that space. And I, w I would say in this situation actually, if you've got the ISK to spend on the reps, I would personally downgrade, but if you've got the ISK to spend on the reps and that's your entire game plan, then go with the compact micro warp, that's probably fine in this situation. Although if you do want to spend time on grid, you might want to make the decision to go for a 10MN instead. With being a Stratios, you can really pick your engagements. You do want to probably change this to a, a Sisters. It's going to give us extra CPU, but it's more about the strength of these probes. Just a nice quality of life increase, really, there. We can perhaps upgrade this. No real reason to. No. Only benefit of this is it would give us the option to, say, go for three 400 boosters, which... Not always useful, but having the option is good. As grams fine, webs fine. Tank is surprisingly okay. Uh, rigs, whoever's made this has done roughly the right thing. I mean, you're using power grid on that. You've got pretty much maxed out on the uh, calibration there. No real massive holes. I mean, you've got 60.9 in the explosive. I would think it might be worth just patching that up. Let's see, I mean, because you've got no other main rigs for that, you're going to get 8% extra. Which is showing as worse on the reps, but it depends. I mean, if we have a look, let's, let's compare this to generic explosive damage. 446 compared to... Four one two. So that you could say is a choice. I mean, it's whether you want to worry about it. It's whether you want to know that you've got an explosive hole that someone could shoot into. I personally like uniform resist where I can, though. So that's that's how I'll do it. I think this gives us the option. Yeah, that gives us the option to upgrade again. So that that actually generally makes it better, but. 
it puts another 35 million on the cost and in all honesty once you're spending 831 million on a Stratios I really think it's a bit much. If we go for a standard exile and a bit of hard shell, go for a dose 3 because it's relatively expensive in the ship. Um, dose 2 would probably also work just fine. You're looking at 707 or 904 EHP per second you're going to wrap. Uh, effective HP is not great, but it is what it is. I would personally have run this as a buffer fit, in all honesty. Makes it a lot, lot cheaper. You could buy three of them instead of just one. And the whole game of nooting people down on a Stratios, it's... It depends. Depends on your targets. In my experience, this sort of thing is just going to get you killed by someone who's got two friends. You know, you run into two people, each of them does 600 DPS and has a dead Stratios. If you've got a warp, you know, a wormhole to disengage with, then great, but that's kind of cancer, not a fan. Moving on from here, because again I'm trying to just focus on fits that I've found here and, and try and keep their style. So we have this Astero. Open up the original as well. So we've got a missing rig slot, which is never great. I don't know why, because the calibration's fine. Got a mix of a couple of different types of rep. Um, a massive explosive resist for some reason. I can only suggest that might be something to do with rats. Maybe, maybe. That's a Corpy A type for no reason, despite having all of the CPU for an energized. It's also got an enduring micro warp drive, which we are going to change straight away to a restrained. Never use the enduring. Uh, but perhaps better than that, really, we have to think why has this ship got a scram, an analyzer, and, and reps? Because. This is kind of going down that whole dual purpose route. If you want to do a scanning tengu, that is absolutely fine. I see that all the time. It's it's just, I mean, this is probably a fit here for that. Yeah, there we go. I think I've got a slightly different one. I mean, you could do one with tank, throw a damage control on there, make these restrained nanos and run a bit of a hull tank or something. It's whatever you feel like, but doing two things is never good. So, if we do try and retool this for PvP instead, let's go for, um, let's take the, let's take that off, let's change this to, let's go for a 1mm instead. The reason being, you are going to be brawling on grid, uh, you're a frigate, having that 1000 meters per second is nice, and it, it gives you at least some opportunity to fight something larger than you. If you've just got the micro warp, you're going to sit on someone's face, eat a scram, and probably die. The scram itself here anyway, change that to a T2, no reason to have a Kaldari navy. It's It just adds to the cost of the ship and uh, I mean as we saw this was 426 mil for really trash. Uh, we'll keep the probe launcher for now. It's, I mean it's, a, it's good to have one but we'll, we'll keep it for now, there are other options. Uh, we'll drop a web onto there since that's pretty useful. But another option would actually be either a second scram or or to go for a warp disruptor. Uh, this will help you get over some some amount of stabs, warp core stabs. But uh, I mean, that's obviously, double scram is a bit better. It depends how confident you are in in not being. Well, it depends how confident you are once you're on grid. If you're just fighting explorers all day and every day, feel free to go for two scrams or a scram disruptor, depending on how lucky you feel. Uh, but a scram web would be a better choice against perhaps a bigger target or just whatever you want to keep held down. You don't want to let someone get a good angle on you in this ship. You've only got 5k EHP. 
We're going to change this to an enum. We've got pretty balanced with this across the board already. So just a cheapo T2 enum. This senti A type will uh, let's check the module group. We'll go for a, we'll go for an ansil instead. I'll try that for now. It's going to give us 4.39k. It's all right. So we're looking at uh, 5.32 plus 4.39. I mean, it's, it's okay. It's nearly 10k HP. Stick a hard shell in this as well. You could run an exile as well. I mean, you might as well if you if your entire tank is based around around repping. It doesn't hurt. Well, it, it can, but you know. Let's drop the cap booster in there and we can see that's not too, too stable, which isn't great. Uh, let's try and work on that. So we've got, yeah, that needs to go away. One benefit we do have is it's stable for 1 minute 45, but after, you know, after 36 seconds, you are going to lose that, perhaps. Hmm. Depends on the situation, really. Well, regardless, um, it's a good time probably to talk about this. If we were to go with, say, a small NOS up here instead, perhaps, mm, it's going to be over. Let's try a compact, and yeah, that just about fits. Maybe a scope twill. I think there might be two more. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so that's another option as well. Going with the NOS, it'll help you keep this running your entire tank for longer. You do lose your potential to scan down sites. Uh, you could relegate that to the cargo hold, though, if you wanted to. Uh, just have a mobile depot and refit. But for now, if we just consider that, let's just drop the number of drones here. If you're using hobgoblins, you're looking at 99 DPS, which isn't great. Uh, and you know, I think it's actually worth it to change that damage control. If we go to a TDA instead, 119 DPS, it's still a bit low. You are only looking at a uh, about a 20 DPS increase. So this is one of the problems with the Astero. You can get a decent bit of DPS out of it if you're willing to use these high slots. Each one of those high slots you can pop an auto cannon in. So you can have an auto cannon there, maybe an auto cannon there as well if you're ballsy, and get an extra 20 DPS from each of them. Um, auto cannons just to save on your capacitor and also to give you damage selection damage type selection you can go blasters as well just for that bit more or if you're worried about tracking but it's it's just options different options i would probably do that i'm a big fan of lots and lots of damage uh, if you're doing just a, a measly 119 dps to someone depending on their tank they they may well just shrug you off for the better part of five minutes until they get a friend to help them or until they slip out of your way depends what happens but uh let's just change this and the low let's change the let's add a nano pump and we're gonna have to change this nos to a compact now yeah probably won't get a second one on now it's gonna be over uh, so the point of a nano pump, by the way, I feel I should mention this. You go with a nano pump over a nanobot accelerator because you're you're giving your uh, your ansel more bang for its buck, really. So if you look here, we've got 3.91k versus with the ansel 4.44k. Whereas if I were to fit an accelerator, it doesn't I mean it increases our, our reps by more it doesn't increase the amount you rep though all it means is you're going to burn through those charges in 26 seconds instead which is not ideal it works in some situations not on a generic pvp estero though 
not like that. I would say in this situation, your best bet for your final module. It depends. Um, just have a look at the drone modules. You've got drone speed. Uh, we're not using sentry, so we don't care about sentries. You could look into something to help your sensor strength. Um, maybe a polycarbon, but that is going to drop your um, that's going to drop your armor. So I would probably go for a hyperspatial. T2 hyperspatial fits nicely. It takes your speed up to 6.25 AU per second. You're still going to be outpaced by explorers, but this should help. It's overall not a great fit, and in all honesty, I would not fly this, but that's just me. I'd fly something more just high damage, ideally try and get at least sort of 150 DPS. This is already a bit, a bit pathetic. All right, back to the fit. We've got the Dramiel now. So if I just copy the Dramiel. All right, so let's put some ammo in. We'll go with phased plasma. And just some Nova rockets. So it's quite a classic Dramiel there. A uh, major thing I've got to say about this is it has absolutely no tank. It feels like this is pretty much entirely a Scepter replacement, maybe. Except... Mm, let's see, if I turn off the prop you've got... Uh, 1.9 second of line. So, yeah, this looks just to be an Instaceptor. Instaceptor with a gyro for the sake of doing an extra 24 DPS. I would probably take that off if we're sticking with the same role. Let's go to a damage control. It's uh, at least going to give us that, that bit more EHP. About 900 more EHP. You don't need the damage. Um... You've got enough to kill drones, which is, uh, drones are going to be your main concern if you're just the tackle. Uh, we should be able to upgrade this, maybe to scoped. Maybe to T2, I don't think so. No. If we drop that bank down to scoped then, and we try the T2 afterburner. Yeah, that works. That's quite nice. It would be ideal to get that... Uh, could micro warp to restrained as well. So we're gonna try that. We'll drop the damage control to compact to do that, and that's good. That gives us I think I think just enough to upgrade this back to T2. Yeah, brilliant, okay. So we've still got a nice complement of rockets and autocannons in the high, which gives us more DPS than that last Astero, which is fine. We've still got our um, uh our line time, 1.9, and we've still got a stupidly quick hyperspatial Dramiel. So that's that's fine. Uh, just looking at the afterburner, we're going to move at 1.79729 uh, with the afterburner on, which is good, which is good. Um, what I would perhaps do is maybe just try and... Let's try making that... Yeah, there we go. Restrain. So if you look at the difference down here, uh, a line time rounds up to the next second, and in the case of insta warp, it's anything under two seconds. So we're looking at 1.9 agility, uh, 1.9 line time even there from that agility. If we change this to restrained, we drop our signature from 36.2 to 35.3, while still keeping the line time just fine. Might be worth doing the same with the nano. Yeah, depending on your skills, the nano might be worth it as well. That's more of an EHP. Depends. You get an extra 200k, not 200k, 200 EHP in exchange for... With the afterburner on, we go from 1 to 1729 to... It's about 10. 10 meters per second or so. And with the micro warp, we've got 4698 up to 
0.4741. So it is a decent increase on the micro warp. I would personally stick with the restraint in this case. I like having EHP where I can get it and it's a nice use of a module that normally doesn't actually get a second thought. So if you're going for a, a Dramiel Scepter, I mean this this is okay. It should fulfill the role. It's not great. You've got the problem of a 35k lock range. Um, not brilliant, but okay. It's passable. Next ship, we've got a Garma. Copy that one. And get the original. Right, so the Garma. Uh, it's rocket gamma, so this is possibly, you know, possibly might have belonged to the same person who bought the Dramiel. Not a huge fan. Uh, 